Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Thursday Night in the Word. And uh, we are glad tonight to have with us um, the guy that's usually been behind the camera, uh, but tonight he's going to sit with us, Anthony Brown. Um, he is a, a member and faithful servant here at Bethesda. He is a big part of our audio and visu visual team been a big been a big asset for us when it comes to getting our videos and stuff up and running and our live services. So it's good to have Anthony with us and it's good to have you with us. We appreciate you taking time out to um, chime in on our Thursday nights um, in the word and uh, we've been talking about the doctrine of Christ, um, talking a little bit about foundational things emphasized how important it is um, for us to have a good solid foundation. You can't build upon a weak, um, broken, or, or non-existent foundation. It will eventually crumble your whole um, structure. And so we, we know these are very important. We've talked about faith toward God. Now we're dealing with the doctrine of baptisms. And tonight, Anthony and I are going to talk a little bit about um, you know, the doctrine of baptism and deal with water baptism. You know, what, um, what is um, water baptism, what it's about, and the importance of it, how important water baptism is. And, you know, today it seems like that it's been kind of de-emphasized. Um, it's almost like it's, Anthony, it's almost like it's optional today instead of, essential. What, 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 did, what do you think um, about water baptism as an option? Yeah, it's, it's been interesting to me. It seems like as I've grown in my walk with Christ and in, in this Christianity that it has been de-emphasized and it seems like it's been put as more of an option today and not a command of obedience or something that we have to do or something that we should do. Um, but as a new Christian, somebody coming into Christianity, they're, they've received salvation. I think it's important that it's taught immediately. The next step is baptism, um, and here's why. In Acts 2 and 38, Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Um, that tells me that Jesus is telling me I need to be baptized. Yes, Agree, and I think <clears throat> I think that a lot of times, you know, we um, we have because I think we want to be too sensitive, or we want to be um, uh, we don't want anybody to feel any kind of pressure, or we don't want people today to feel any kind of obligation. But really and truthfully, if we are truly born again, then it's not a have to; it's a want to. You know, I, I think that's a huge difference today and 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 what I see happening in the church. It's a matter of people feeling like, well, I don't want to, or I don't have to, or I shouldn't have to, you know, and all that kind of stuff. But really and truthfully, when we receive Jesus Christ into our hearts, it's not a matter of I have to. You know, I, I never I never once felt like, man, I have to read my Bible or else I'm not going to be a, a, a good Christian or Man, I have to go to church or I'm going to, you know, um, be a backslider or something of that nature. Um, you know, I have to go to revival meetings. I have to go do this or I have to sing songs or um, those type things. And I, I, I don't think that that should be our desire at all. And I think if, we, if that is where we are, that we feel like something is uh, an option for me or I don't have to be obedient or I don't have to do this. We should have. I think we should check out where's our heart at when we wrestle with doing things that are clearly biblical. Because, as you said, water baptism is a command, not an option. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus, and you shall be saved. And so, I, but I think one of the reasons that people feel like that it's an option, so to speak 
is because I think of the injustice that leadership has done to water baptism. Because we've made it out to people like it's just a ordinance or just a ritual thing that we do. And, you know, like other things, you know, we've made communion, um, you know, sharing communion like we've done in the church for all these generations. It's, uh, it's a ritual when we all know, no, it's not a ritual. It's not just an ordinance, um, but it is uh, something that the Lord has commanded us to do. He says, as often as you do it, do this in remembrance of me. Same thing with water baptism. Jesus was our testimony. Before Christ made his appearance on um, John's baptism there, John was baptizing people under repentance. And Jesus came in and John wanted him to baptize him, but Jesus says, no, it's, it's important for me to baptize you. And so baptism is important in, in the process and aspect of our salvation. Yes. Um, when you think about the saving value, when you think about that saving value, what do you feel like that baptism is a part of saving us from? Well, I think it's saving us from ourselves in a way, in a way of it's easy for us to disobey. It's easy for us to get away from what is reality. And when we step into Christianity and discipleship and leadership, it's our job to teach the importance of these commands. Um, and when we do see a new Christian and to teach them, hey, time to get baptized, let's get busy. Um, and I think it saves us from ourselves because I know I went through times where I did exactly what you were just talking about, where I, I would read the Bible because I thought it was supposed to. I would I got baptized because I thought it was all. supposed to. Um, I didn't do it because I wanted to. I did it because I thought I had to. I think true repentance is just like you said. You want to do it, and you enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I uh, want us to be mindful of um, what baptism really does. Um, you know, the Bible teaches us in Exodus chapter 14. He talks about the children of Israel um, who um, were in bondage slaves to Egypt and the Pharaoh, um, God sent them a deliverer and brought them out. And of course, we all know the story that the children of Israel fled um, Egypt. And as they fled, Pharaoh changes his mind. God hardens his heart. And he wants to go pursue them and bring them back. And they get to the Red Sea and here comes Pharaoh's army. And before them, they have the Red Sea. And we know Moses stretches forth his rod, the sea parts, and the children of Israel cross across the Red Sea on dry ground. And when they get to the other side and, is, and Pharaoh's following them, the Bible says that waters begin to uh, recede back and drown the Egyptians. Well, in that passage of scripture there, um, you know, it, it talks about how that um, they were baptized into the Red Sea. And, and so we, we see that when we look at that, we look at how that took place and what was produced from that, they, they were actually um, delivered prior to the Red Sea incident, but the Bible tells us that they were saved from that that vexed them by the waters of the Red Sea. So they were baptized in the Red Sea. So what um, happened to them was Red Sea, the Red Sea incident, the baptism that they took place there became an aspect of, of a part of their salvation, their deliverance. And, um, you know, we see 1 Corinthians 10, 2 tells us that, um, and it says, and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. So as, a, as an aspect of baptism is more than just a good conscience toward God, but baptism delivers us from that that is vexing us. Because, you know, Scripture teaches God is faithful to save and deliver his children from all that hinders, I mean, or vexes them as they, as they would obey 
the commands and follow Jesus Christ in obedience. Who do we follow? We follow his leading. And, and so when you think about that vexing thing, he, he saves us from that which, he saved them from that which vexed them. And we can also um, look in the scripture also talks a little bit about, um, in, in First Peter there, it talks about Noah and the ark. It wasn't the ark that saved them, but it was the water, the flood that actually saved them from those who vexed them. When you think about that vexing, that, that's important to think about that. Yeah, you mentioned you know both Noah and the Israelites, and to me they were delivered by water in a very literal sense. The the Red Sea parted; they got away from the Egyptians. The you know everything that was vexing Noah and his family was wiped away in the flood. For us, with baptism, it's the same thing. He can deliver us. When we're obedient, he delivers us from whatever's vexing us. Not on our own, but with him, we can be delivered from whatever is vexing us or whatever our situations are that we're going through. Right. Yeah. When I, and when I think of vexed, um, you know, I, I think of uh, things that annoy or things that trouble, um, things that can cause frustration. You know, they're... They're just tormentors. And, you know, the Bible teaches us that we're buried with Christ through baptism and we rise with him in the newness of life and we have a changed mindset, a changed heart, a changed desire. Um, there, we are a new creation. And that happens through uh, regeneration of the Holy Spirit and repentance. But when we're baptized, we're buried with him. That water separates us from those things, it's a part of that that separates us from those things that vexed or tormented us or nagged at us or frustrated us. Because now when we come up, we're, we're testifying to the world through baptism. We're testifying to the world that now we are followers of Jesus Christ. We're not ashamed right. of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the power of God unto salvation. And so we... Declare to everybody, uh, not only have I made a verbal commitment, but are, are, are a commitment in my heart, nonverbal maybe, a commitment in my heart to Jesus Christ, but now I'm making a verbal commitment to Jesus and to all of you testifying that I am a follower of Jesus through the obedience of water baptism. And so, you know, when we, when we look at these passages, you know, 2 Peter 2, 4 through 9 says, For if God did not spare the angels when they sinned, but cast them into hell and committed them to chains and gloomy darkness to be kept until judgment, if he did not spare the ancient world, but preserved Noah, a herald of righteousness, with seven others when he brought a flood upon the world and, uh, the world of the ungodly, by turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to ashes, condemned them to extinction, making them an example of what is going to happen to the ungodly, and if he rescued a uh, righteous lot, greatly distressed by the sensual conduct of the wicked, for as that righteous man lived among them day by day, he was tormenting his righteous soul over their lawless deeds when he saw and heard. Then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials and to keep the unrighteous under punishment until the day of judgment. God knows how to deliver us from that that torments or vexes us. Frees us. I mean, you know, the Bible says, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And we are following through with that, as the scripture you said, Acts 2.38, through repentance, but also being baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, because there is no other name by which man can be saved. There is no other name in which demons flee, and we cast out demons, and we pray in. And so when we're baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, man, we're cut off from that. We're cut off from the power of that that torments and vexes us. And to me, it's interesting what you said there, that God knows how to deliver us from those things. Because it's, I know sometimes I have no idea how to get out of situations or things that are just small annoyances even that put me in a place that I don't want to be. 
he knows how to deliver me in those situations. And that falls back to being obedient and, you know, putting our trust where it needs to be. Yeah, it's it's like, you know, okay, God, you got this. I'm giving it to you. Yeah, and, and I, I think that's what we're saying when we, you know, really when we submit ourselves to being immersed in water. You know, we're saying that um, we want the control of our lives to be put into your hands. Yes. And we're testifying to everybody. Um, we give up. We surrender. Um, you know, and that, that was the case, you know, with Noah and his family. I mean, Noah had no evidence of floods, had no evidence of rain. As a matter of fact, it, it only had been a dew, a mist um, that they experienced. So he goes out and he builds this enormous boat, which you and your family just went and seen the ark. And yes. so, you know, what a, what a, what a real good time to talk about this deliverance yeah, <laughs> because you actually walked in that thing, but he builds this gigantic boat and mocked and ridiculed and made fun of. And he, he goes on and he enters in, they, him and his family enter this ark with the animals that God brought, but yet it didn't sink in until the rains came and it started to flood and, and the flood waters carried them away from, those that were their tormentors, you know, because the Bible says that men's hearts and minds were on evil continually. And so they were set free from that. And God delivered them from that through the waters of baptism and brought them to safety. And what a huge form of obedience that took to build that giant ark with no evidence. We think it's a huge form of obedience to be baptized. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, 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 just, it's just amazing. You know, what God wants to do with the life. When we when we are obedient to Christ, to follow after what he talks about in the scriptures, um, that God so works in our lives through that obedience and brings us to a place of salvation and deliverance and peace and joy that we could never experience on our own. We could never get to that place by ourselves. But just through us saying yes to Jesus' finished work and yes and, and obedience to your commands, God, we're going to walk this out because we love you. That's that's to me is, is a heart that's changed and now has been made new because why else would I do that? And, and you know, the scripture also teaches us by, by your fruit they know you. And, and, and so will we not ask ourselves if we are in a place to where we're struggling with obedience, we're struggling with serving, we're struggling with digging into the word, we're struggling with this relationship with Christ, we have to ask ourselves, what's going on? What's wrong? Because the Bible teaches us that those that have given their hearts to Jesus Christ, you know them by their fruit. So there should be a fruitfulness. Well, to me, one of the greatest aspects of fruitfulness is obedience. Even in obedience to Christ's command that I might not fully understand. When I can remember when I got baptized, uh, when I first gave my heart to God at 18 years old, I didn't have no idea. I mean, they shared with us, they talked with us, they gave us the scripture about being baptized, but I, I didn't have any idea. But my, in my heart, my desire was, Whatever I need to do, I want to be obedient. I know that whatever God wants to do in my life, he loves me and he's going to take care of me. I don't have to fully understand. But it was important enough to know that God wanted me to be washed, washed in the blood of the Lamb, but God also wanted me to be uh, immersed and washed in the water purified to come up out of that water to follow him and to live for him um, and, and to allow God to direct my life. And so we, we see a lot of in the scripture, we could talk a lot in the scripture about, um, you know, the importance of washings and, um, you know, you see it in Hebrews chapter 10, uh, 2022, it talks about, um, you know, the washings and Titus 3, 5, which, you know, it talks about us making sure that we are obedient to Christ and God knows how to deliver us and keep us. Acts 2.38 talks about repentance and baptism. So we, we can see where blood, water, and the Spirit are working 
in our lives. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all our sins. The water um, uh, separates and, and, and keeps us from that that vexes us. And the Spirit leads and guides and directs us into you know, all truth. Uh, and so when somebody uh, wants to be water baptized, we need to think about um, what, are, what are the prerequisites for somebody to be baptized? I mean, should, can, can we just walk out here and just baptize anybody? What's, but but I, wanted, I want us to look at, I believe there's at least four prerequisites for water baptism. And go ahead. The, the, pre, the interesting thing about these prerequisites is when I'm reading over them and thinking about these things is you can't do one without the other. You can't skip and do this one first and then this one. They have to go in this order. Um, and that's the hearing of the word is a big prerequisite. Believing the word. Right. Um, then your repentance and then your obedience. Right. It's That's exactly right. Like um, you, you said, the preaching the gospel. Um, the scripture teaches Romans 10, he says, verse 14, 15, how then will... They call on him in whom they have not believed. And how are they to believe in him and whom they have not heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. And so it's, they have somebody has to hear the gospel. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So somebody, in order to... Um, First and foremost, in order to believe, they have to um, hear the gospel being preached, and and then and then when the gospel's preached, they have to have a believing heart. Um, they have to be able to believe uh, in the gospel that they had just heard. Mark sixteen fifteen sixteen says, and he said to them, "Go into all the world." And proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. But whoever does not believe will be condemned. So they have to have somebody preach to them the gospel. And then when the gospel's preached, they have to believe in their heart. He says, believe in your heart the Lord Jesus Christ and confess with your mouth him. And so it, it's believing in the heart the gospel that's been preached to them. And then once they believe that the natural thing for them to do is to repent, to turn around and repent, Acts 2.38, again, that you brought up earlier. Um, we have to repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you shall be saved. And you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so it's important that we understand the first prerequisite is the preaching of the gospel. The second one is that we have to believe in our hearts. The third one is we have to repent because how can you be baptized if you haven't repented? It says repent and be baptized, not be baptized then down the road believe or down the road repent or down the road do this or down the road do that. You have to repent first. You have to call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. And then the last prerequisite is to obey. I, I think that's awesome how those are tied together. Preaching of the gospel, you know, believing in the heart, repenting of your sins, and obedience to that gospel. Because I think those work in line with the fruit that we're talking about, bearing fruit. Um, I hear the gospel preached. I believe in my heart the Lord Jesus Christ, so I repent. I, I believe, therefore I repent. Because if I believe but don't do anything, then have I really believed? So believing produces action. Passively, I can believe. But active side of faith is an action. And that action is repentance. Repenting of my sins to Christ and believing in, in that Jesus did that work for me. And then out of that, because I did all that, because I've been made a new creation, because I have been brought to Christ, now I, I what do I got to do? He's got to repent. That's the hard part, right? Yeah. What do I? And that should be what we. That should be what what we ask. Okay. Now what do I do? Yeah. If if you and if you get your life changed, you want to, what now? What do I do? And not only that, for those of us that are already there, 
I'm not saying we're the end all be all, but we've got to be ready to tell people here's oh, yeah. what you do next. Absolutely. Um, because we don't always know, and especially when we're young. Because that brings up another subject, but we can go off on a rabbit trail just for a minute. Because what are we all to be doing? He says, go ye into all the world and do what? Make disciples. So when we have new uh, babes in Christ, our responsibility is to make disciples, to teach and instruct them in the things of God. And so we automatically want to say to them, hey, have you believed? Have you called on Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes, I have. Have you been baptized since you believed? Well, I don't even know what that means. Well, let me tell you about that. That should be our heart, our desire to tell people about the truth of God's word so that they can have that same freedom and liberty that you and I have. That's, that's an important aspect of what God wants us to do. Because when we talk about these four prerequisites, if you look at them, then it eliminates false doctrine that's out there that churches have believed in for as long as um, and way before you and I ever were, ever existed. They believed in these. For example, infant baptism, regeneration. A lot of places believe that we bring our kids at a, uh, after they've been born and we um, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We do this big ritual. But yet the scripture says that absolutely does no good because that baby can't repent. How can you repent of something you have no knowledge of? The preaching of the gospel brings us to the knowledge that we need a savior. Well, how can, how can my um, grandson, who, who is still uh, four months old, five months old, how can he know he needs to repent, so what good does it do to baptize him? Now, we can dedicate him to the Lord. Lord, we, we, we dedicate him unto you. We surrender him. We thank you for the gift you've given to us, and we do do those things, but it does no good to baptize a baby because the baby cannot meet the conditions um, of hearing and believing the gospel or even repentance. And then, and then we talk about the necessity for salvation. Scriptures show you must be a believer. If you, if you can be baptized, then you lose the necessity to understand the need for salvation if you're baptized first. Or that baptism makes you a member into God's family through confirmation or something of that nature. And I think that goes back to where we started with this being baptism being more of an option and not a command and more of a ritual than something that we're commanded to do and that we need to do to further our walk with Christ. Um, because it doesn't happen before repentance, it happens after. Um, and the things you're mentioning are more of a ritual thing or more of an optional thing that you can do this, but it's not, it's not what the book's telling you. Right. Well, a lot, and, and talk about this other aspect here, membership. You know, a lot of people feel like the baptism makes them a member of the body of Christ, but yet the Bible tells us that it, it's not baptism, but it's the Holy Spirit that baptizes everyone into the uh, body of Christ. He said we have been baptized into the body of Christ by, by the Holy Spirit. He places each one into the body of Christ as he sees fit, into, into the, you know, the, the, the body of Christ that's out here all over the land, and then the and then the Holy Spirit leads people to become members of local expressions of that body. Uh, another another uh, false doctrine is baptism for the dead. The emphasis of baptism is not is not being buried, but being resurrected. The focus of baptism is not to announce an experience, but rather the walk following the experience. Someone cannot accomplish that, what baptism stands for, after physical death. And so we're talking about something that is an expression. You know, um, the, the scripture teaches us that baptism is an expression, an outward expression of a good conscience toward God. Um, it, it helps to um, bring us to a place to where we testify to everyone that, man, our 
conscience is clear. I've made peace with God. And you can't do that after you, you already did. And so when we when we talk about all these aspects of, of baptism, we need to keep those in mind. Before somebody can be baptized, the preaching of the gospel has to take place. The believing in the heart and the obedience of the gospel. And then finally, um, uh, we we make sure that we our repentance, and then finally obedience to that gospel. And, and it's important that that takes place, but it's important that out of that obedience, we do what God commands us to do. Uh, next week, we'll go in a little further with baptism uh, in water, and we'll talk a little bit more. And uh, Anthony, I really appreciate you coming out from behind the camera. I know this is not, your, this is not your comfort place. And, and I can remember the first time I mentioned to Anthony about coming out and being a guest on here, it was like, you know, oh, I don't know about that. But, uh, you know, I appreciate him coming. Anthony is a student of the word, and he has a heart desire to fulfill um, the destiny that God has for his life. And I, I thank God for the young men that God has placed uh, at Bethesda. And Anthony's desire is to uh, be an obedient servant and follow after Jesus Christ lead his family into whatever it is that God has for them. And we thank God for you, appreciate you, and uh, appreciate all you're doing. Absolutely. Glad to be here. God bless you guys, and, and I just want to pray for you before we go. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you so much for all you do for us. I thank you for your word. I thank you for giving us the uh, doctrine of baptism in water. And Lord, I thank you that um, Lord, as we are obedient to your commands, Lord, you are um, uh, in a uh, real way continuing to save us from ourselves. And Lord, that's really who it is that we are being saved from. Not the devil, not this world, but we're being saved from ourselves. And, and God, we thank you for all you're doing for us, the power of your word. Thank you, Lord, that you sent your son Jesus to die for us. And and anybody out there today that you do not know Jesus, I want you to know he is here right now, ready to save you. Spirit of God, convict them, draw them, bring them to you, cause them to um, uh, believe and, and look to you as the one who is more than enough. And Father, we just give you praise and glory and honor for all that you do, and we give it to you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you today. Be sure to be with us next Thursday at 6.30.